Greetings, fellow senseis, friends, and classmates of Ujo Sushanjiru. I want to thank each one of you who took the time to view the trial video and gave me feedback. This is the real deal, an April 4th workshop lesson. Before we get into me acting up, I want to say that I sincerely hope that you and your family members, acquaintances, etc. remain safe. I want you to know that this is really the pits. What I mean is we cannot see each other because of the current health crisis. I think we have a great time before we get start, get to start our class. We start by eating and socializing. Sometimes I'm late getting started simply because it's great to talk to one another. In your email, you have a copy of the lesson handout and an annotated page from the Mustard Seed Garden Manual that I downloaded from the Met. This Mustard Seed Garden Manual shows the first three strokes. This one has a gap in it. So on idea present, brush absent, your penis eye, piercing eye of the elephant. Yeah. The Mustang Garden Manual, and the English one, and of course the Japanese ones. I mean, poo 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 poo. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Chinese, Chinese, Chinese. Well, actually, Japanese have their copy that they made. So anyway, what they have here is coffee stroke. All right. Now, the coffee head shows the two strokes angled in. Personally, I don't know what you do after that. I really don't, because when you look at the regular three strokes. It also looks like a fish eater of carp head. So, this manual shows this stroke of the carp head come all the way across. This one's short, that's short. So, I would imagine that at the base of the flower is where they have these short carp head strokes. I looked at the book for, from I, Young Yu, and he just shows carpet. Well, actually, this, this stroke right there. Anyway, I just gave you this so that you have something uh, to have in your hand out. This is the handout that we really have to worry about. The most important part of this lesson is painting the orchid leaves from the outcropping. This should be easier than crossing your body. This is coming from top down, so it should be easier, so to speak. The outcropping is made with a modified vibration stroke. That is a poison stroke, or what I call a jitter stroke. I'm going to demonstrate this slightly differently. I need to dress our left-handed painters. I want to do it first. Up! <laughs> Uh, you can't paint without ink. That's what I'm, I, I'm, I'm assuming yet. Well, left handers, you have to hold the brush slightly differently. Thank you. 
Okay, left hander, you take the brush and hold it sort of like this. And then you do your jitter stroke coming down. Now, this outcropping is sort of thin. So what you need to do is just add some more ink to it. Then all you do is your seven leaves with one loaded brush. That's it. Now, for the rest of us, we'll be doing it with the right hand. Same load in the brush. Water, medium ink, and dark ink. Black ink's always last. You don't have to go squiggling your brush around in the dark ink. All you do is pick up some. Now again, the modified jitter stroke. Seven orchid leaves, one load of brush. Yeah. I have <laughs> a little gap in here. I don't, I don't know whether I want to come out of there or from the top. I come from out there. I come from that little gap. Now, this piercing eye of the elephant thing, instead of going up that way, I'm going to come through there, but I'm coming around. Then, of course, the next four. There you have it. Now, it's really easy. Of course, it's easy for me. I don't know, you know. But, that's all you have to do. For those of you who attended the March class, I gave you some pictures that had buds in them. I didn't have the arrow at it, I had the buds slightly open. We can paint the orchid buds. Some of the small ones be painted with one brush stroke. I usually use two brush strokes. I don't have a clue why I use two brush strokes. I just use two brush strokes for a closed bud. And it shows that little line. Now, in painting the bud, it goes from front and tapers in the back. From front, wide, and tapers in the back. 
You can use a small brush, something like a happy dot. A mental brush, a mental brush, yeah. and painting the moss orchid, or, I'm sorry, yeah, hoo -hoo -hoo. and painting the flowers, you can put dark ink on your brush for each petal. The reason why you're giving you're giving the thing texture. The flowers are always lighter than the leaves because they're delicate, and so that's what the light shading is. It's delicate. So, chip, fat, tail. <laughs> That's too much ink. Bye, George. I don't like Terrastic Comey by accident. Yeah, that's too dark. That's too much ink. And paint the bud. You can put dark ink or dip your brush. You pick up dark ink. Dark flowers are delicate. And so they're supposed to be lighter than the orchid leaves. The bud. And painting the bud. And painting the flowers. There's a difference between moss orchid. The spring orchid. The spring orchid shows all five petals. The marsh orchid shows sometimes three, sometimes four, and five. It usually shows all five when it's fully open at the bottom. If you come down, which we'll do in May, you find that it looks it differently. But right now, what we're doing is showing how the bud's done. The bud comes from the tip to the base, when the base is always tapered. That's a little dark. I have to see here a minute. Okay, that's better. That's Bud. That's the Pac Man mouth, so to speak. I always talk about.
no matter which direction you're painting the bud from, it's still from the tip to the base, with the base being tapered. What you have to do. Now, as I mentioned, when we get into doing the marsh orchid, sometimes all you see is three petals. I'm going to give you an example of that right now. The first two strokes. And a petal. A petal always touch the first two. Sometimes just even closer. So remember. The orchid, put some ink on it so you get a little dark. No matter which direction you paint from, it's from the tip to the back. Just so you can get a better view of what I painted. Sorry about the shadow, but that's the way it is. That's a little better. So until we can see each other again, stay safe. If you have any questions, you have my email. Matter of fact, you can do this when you have nothing else to do. I know it's a pitch to stay at home. After staying longer than anybody else. I just had a nose bleed. It's just one of my normal nose bleeds. I don't know whether it's weather or what. I did a short look at what I painted for those buds. Well, I think you see better what I'm doing if I use a larger brush to make a larger bud. Tip wide. Taper. It might be good enough, I don't know yet. Let me just play, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> Let me act up here.
This part should actually meet right there at the tail. So I get to do this again. <laughs> I gotta put a little bit more water in there. I wanna see if I can make this thing big, like him big. This is deliberately darker ink. Brush beat me up. I think that's sufficient. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, that's enough. Okay. Again, I thank you very much. Stay healthy. And I really hope, I sincerely hope, that we get to see each other by May. Yeah, if possible, because some of you people I see once a month, some I see once a week, some I see more than once a month. Actually, let's see. This is a whole flower. That ink was not dark enough. So I'm going to cheat here to do it. Okay.
We will not be making flowers this large. I just did this so, for an example, with a larger brush, so that you can see it a little bit better. There's two petals, third petal, this petal up here can also be down there. Then your two last two petals. This is a wide open orchid. That's your sheath. So until we see each other again, hopefully soon, I'm really hoping I don't have to do a May video. Of course, I'm ready to do a May video, but I'm just hoping we don't have to.